also discussed four areas where critical intervention is needed and where progress has been made. President Buhari gets backing over decision to consult further before signing the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. We congratulate the government for its commitment to allocating at least 1% of consolidated revenue from the national budget. Nigeria gets thumbs up for health security as National Cancer Control Plan comes on stream. And Foreign Affairs Ministry and NAPTIP alerts on another booming human trafficking destination. Good evening and thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I'm Elizabeth Stover in Abuja. Reading with me tonight in Lagos is Hingino John Adams and Pam Dunyam in Makudi. The Presidential Industrial Policy and Competitiveness Advisory Council met Friday to, ta to take stocks of its intervention on critical issues affecting industries. It further consulted on the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. The council agreed with President Muhammad Buhari that there should be more consultation before signing the agreement on behalf of the nation. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports. The meeting took stock of the work being done on 49 interventions that have been identified and progress made. Lots of progress was reported. We discussed four areas where critical intervention is needed and where progress has been made. Just to reaffirm how we're going to work together on those areas. Those four areas include the anti-smuggling that I already talked about, what we're doing there. They include what we're doing with the states, particularly with the states around them. Um, you know, things to do with infrastructure, like broadband expansion and the, and the work with the states. They also include things around financing, you know, just the things we're doing around financing. And then finally, they also cover what we're doing on something called um, on roads, you know, the roads where the private sector wants to get involved under what is called the Road Trust Fund scheme. It would be recalled that President Muhammad Buhari had shelved going to Kigali to sign the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement recently for want of more consultation on the operations from stakeholders, and this also came up at the meeting. The meeting agreed with the president and concurred that more consultation is the way to go because the African Free uh, Continental Free Trade Area Agreement will have implications for us, which we hope will be positive, but it's the private sector that will implement it, and therefore we must work with them from the onset. Uh, what the private sector is going to help us with our key industrial roads, uh, the various sectors, for instance, the Aba industrial sector, the road there, and we're also looking at the one, uh, the Apapa port for exports. So that, that's good. The Industrial Policy and Competitiveness Advisory Council is one of the important platforms for engagement between government and private sector in dealing with those things that are critical needs of industry. In the State House, J.D. Onifade, NT News. Our latest reports reaching us indicate that excise duties and premium paid on imported products have emerged as one of Nigeria's biggest money makers. Though the Nigeria Customs Service is taking the credit for what is an unprecedented revenue generation from the ports, it is quick to point out the source of its inspiration. President Muhammad Buhari, Cecil Agbele, tells us more. For the past year, the Apapa port here in Lagos, which is by far Nigeria's biggest port, has been a test case for government's plan to implement its creative ease of doing business initiative. Containers, forklifts and inspectors, these are regular features at the Apapa wharf. The current administration has, however, added three key attributes, transparency, speed and accuracy. The result being an unprecedented leap in a nation's revenue. These three key attributes are the new elements that have helped spike revenue generation and made the difference from previous years. In 2017 alone, the Apapa port raked in 351 billion naira, amounting to an 18% increase from the previous year. In the same year, the agency exceeded its national target of 770 billion naira to rake in an impressive 1 trillion naira. 
Transparency here is enforced by designated personnel, but ensured by technology. The Nigerian Customs Integrated System, NICES, is a crucial tool introduced to basically aid faster hands, but discourage sticky fingers. We are very, very optimistic that our revenue for this year uh, will even be more than what we collected last year, courtesy of the upgrade you know, of our uh, system. There are also other agencies that aid the process to ensure, among other things, that illegal goods do not escape scrutiny. We will all be there, examine the products, those that uh, need attention, which we ask to call on the relevant authority. We call them reform. If we have any challenges, we let them know. The current reforms at the ports echo the view from the top. These are things that we're doing to make sure that we, we key into the ease of doing business and we also enhance our own processes and at the end of the day uh, ensure that our mandate of trade facilitation, uh, revenue generation and of course the protection of, uh, of, 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 of our people is enhanced. The Muhammad Buhari administration aims to match bread with action in the fight against corruption and a drive to reposition the nation towards a positive trajectory of economic development and sustained growth. Cecile Egbele, NTA News. Nigeria's market processes have been perceived as not being in tune with the global realities. A new project is, however, seeking to change the status quo by promoting standard quality management criteria in Nigeria based on the European model. Hadiza Naja Atutijani reports. Is it a strategy? Is it a strategy you're building? Yes. To enhance competitiveness in trade and investment, Nigeria must reposition itself in the global market. Experts say this can be achieved with a strategic framework which guarantees safety and market quality of goods and services. The National Quality Infrastructure Project, which these participants from key trade and regulatory sectors are learning, proposes to remove technical barriers to trade, among other impediments. Implementing partners and other stakeholders of the project say that national quality infrastructure will provide the missing link between standards and quality control. It means Nigeria will get all the infrastructure that is required not only to promote and develop the quality inside the country. Set is to improve the infrastructure available to build quality in the society from testing to standardization and uh, all the aspects of conformity to standard. Most of our companies and organizations, even our products, don't pass because we don't have quality. So we need to start imbibing this, taking it serious and looking at it the way it should be holistically. We're going to add value to various other companies once the country adopts this model. The United Nations Industrial Development Organization is supporting the federal government with the initiative financed by the European Union. Hadiza Naja Atutijani, NTA News. Talking health now, Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, has commended the leadership and commitment of the federal government to universal health coverage and health security, but urged communities to take ownership. Dr. Ghebreyesus, who also launched the Ohwe logo, which depicts the basic healthcare provision fund program meant to expand high impact and life saving interventions to all Nigerians, gave the commendation at a news conference. Health correspondent Rabi Abdullah reports. The launch of the OHUA logo was one of the major activities the World Health Organization Director General presided over while in the country. OHUA, which means life in Ibira one of the 500 languages in Nigeria, was said to have been picked because of its easy to recall short syllabic word that depicts good health. The logo is to be displayed in accredited facilities under the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund program and will serve as a signpost to inform citizens where they can access the basic minimum package of service. I'm glad I'm proud to, to launch away. We congratulate the government for its commitment 
to allocating at least 1% of consolidated revenue from the national budget to the basic health care provision fund. His parting shot for Nigeria was a call to action. The, the only thing we urge now is to increase the speed to cover the 100 million and to have the hue or life uh, to really be translated into action. Investment in health actually uh, is important and not only uh, the lives that we can save by investing in, in health, but at the same time uh, saving also resources. Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus is the first ever Director General of the World Health Organization from Africa in Abuja. Rabi Abdullah, NTA News. And safeguarding the health of Nigerians must not be left to the government alone. The private sector, individuals and corporate bodies must contribute their quota towards a healthy nation. Minister of Health Professor Isaac Adewale made the remark at the, launch in, at the launch of the National Cancer Control Plan in Abuja. Murjana to Adam Said reports. Investigation shows that Nigeria constitutes approximately 20% of the population of Africa and slightly more than 50% of the West African population. Expert in the field of science and medicine believes that Nigeria is a major contributor to the overall cancer burden on the continent. The present administration considers cancer control one of the key projects with the hope of shaping policy direction for efficient and evidence-based program and interventions. We thought through it from prevention to early detection, increasing awareness, and to putting in place effective treatment plan for the country. Uh, and so we, we have a diligent plan that can really address all the issues. The launch and dissemination of the Cancer Control Plan 2018 to 2020 will change the narrative about cancer in Nigeria. For the improvement of the well-being of all Nigerians, to officially launch this Cancer Control Plan 2018 to 2022 with the hope that one day cancer will become history in Nigeria. The development of the Cancer Control Plan has been painstakingly done by stakeholders from diverse backgrounds and specialists in cancer control and prevention in Africa and beyond. In Abuja, Murijana to Adam Said, NTA News. More on health. Wife of the President, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, has called on the private sector to continue to invest in maternal health for the reduction of child and infant mortality in Nigeria. Mrs. Buhari stated this at a meeting with the private sector in our advocacy towards improving reproductive health in the country. State House correspondent Ali Kabir reports. The 2016 statistics by the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, and the Department for International Development, DFID, explained that Nigeria's maternal mortality rate has risen to 10%, where about 111 women die on a daily basis. This increase, stakeholders say, is worrisome, despite effort being put in place by the government to address the challenge. Looking for the lasting solution to the problem of reproductive maternal and child health through collective effort of private sector is what informed the decision of this gathering put together by the future short program of the wife of the president through Aisha Muhammad Buhari Foundation. Today I'm calling on all private sectors to look out for innovative ways of building partnerships to achieve our goal of improving the health sector. We cannot be done only at federal. Please do something at the state level. Maternal newborn child health is fundamental to development. Appealing to you to see that we have to curb this menace in our society. The type of leadership that we've been hearing about um, today um, from, from Her Excellency is, is exactly the type of leadership that is making this succeed um, so far in, in Nigeria. We will continue to uh, support all this great initiative and we are very, very glad that uh, we've been associated with this event. The wife of the president said she remains resolute in her advocacy of championing the cause of improving the lives of women and children in Nigeria. From the State House, Ali Ukabir, 
NTA News. Let me take You're watching NTA Network News. Time to take a break for some messages. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Last day of the month. This alert has to come in early today. You have a text message. Haba, what kind of disturbance is this? You have a text message. Oh, that must be a message from my darling. Unsolicited message again. This is harassment. Wow, what's this now? Are you tired? of receiving unsolicited text messages on your phones? Then, take advantage of Do Not Disturb Code 2442. Simply text STOP to 2442 and all unsolicited text messages will stop coming. If you want to be receiving particular types of calls and text messages instead, text HELP to 2442 and choose the option that suits you, like finance, sports, religion, where your service provider fails to meet your request. Call NCC on toll-free number 622. Thank you, NCC. NCC, Connected Nigeria. Ahmadu Bello University Zaria Alumni Association invites you to its 2018 Public Lecture and Recognition Awards Dinner, date Saturday, 14th April, time Public Lecture, 10 a.m., Awards Dinner, 7 p.m., Venue International Conference Center, Abuja, Special Guest of Order, President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, Guest Lecturer, Professor Iyabu Abubakar, Chairman, Malab Adamufika, Pro Chancellor. Dinner events dignitaries include General T. White Nanjuma, Alaji Yael Ahmed, Professor Ibrahim Garba, Vice Chancellor, Senator Aisha Al Hassan, Women of First Minister and Chairman FCT Branch and FCT Minister Muhammad Musabello, Royal Father will be of Wanicha, Igwe Nemekachebe. All alumni, friends of the university, and other well meaning Nigerians are invited. Saturday, 14th April, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Signed, Professor Ahmed Tijani Mora, National President, ABU Alumni Association. We look at you as people in our society and we are proud of you. After so many battles and challenges you faced, some lost and others defeated, but you have triumphed. We believe you are a great warrior as honors are always extended to those who deserve it because what we celebrate will always increase in value. Destiny Channel's Broadcasting Network presents the first ever Colonel Heroes Award under the distinguished chairmanship of Alhajinu Umanu Baro Ambata. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano State, Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduje, and the of honor, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Jigawa State, Alhaji Muhammadu Badaru Abubakar, and the Royal Father of the Day, His Highness Sir King Kano, Malam Muhammadu Sanusi II. There will be a keynote address on integrity and sacrifice to be delivered by HOD Political Science Department, Bayer University Kano, Professor Abu Muhammad Fagi. Venu Coronation Hall, Government House Kano, date Saturday, 14th of April 2018, time 11 a.m. prompt. Kano Heroes Awards, celebrating excellence, commitment, and dedication. Announcer, Chairman LOC, Al Haji Bala Salihudo, the Vice Chancellor, Engineer Professor Tunji Samuel Ibiemi, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, Council, and Senate of Achievers University of War, Undo State, announces the 10th year anniversary and the 7th convocation ceremonies of the university. On Friday, 13th of April 2018, Mr. Abubakar Abba Belo, Managing Director and Chief Executive, Nigeria Export Import Bank, Nexem, will deliver the 10th year anniversary and 2018 convocation lecture titled Non-Oil Export, Panacea to Underachievement of Nigeria's Economic Potential. And on Saturday, 14th of April 2018, 250 graduating students in 12 programs of the university's College of Natural and Applied Sciences and College of Social and Management Sciences will be admitted to first degrees with presentation of awards to deserving students. Also at the occasion, honorary doctorate degrees of the university will be awarded to Emeritus Professor David Adedayo Ijalaye, Nigeria's first distinguished and Emeritus Professor of Law, Right Honorable Simon Lalong, Governor of Plata State, Honorable Aisha Tu Jibril Diku, former Minister of State for Education and member House of Representatives, and Mr. William Babatunde Fowler, Executive Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service. Special guest, Arakun Eroti Miakiridulu, Governor of Ondo State. All events will take place at the Trinity Auditorium of the University, Kilometer 1, Idase Ute Road, Owo, Ondo State, at 11 a.m. each day. Achievers University, knowledge, integrity, and leadership. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, 
where the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. <laughs> This is NTA Network News. Four years after the Chibok abduction, President Muhammad Buhari has assured parents of the schoolgirls that their daughters will never be forgotten or abandoned. In a statement signed by the SSA on Media and Publicity, Gerba Shehu, the president enjoins the Borno State government, parents of the girls and Nigerians, in commemorating the fourth anniversary of the sad event. President Buhari urges the parents to keep hope alive on the return of their daughters, noting the recovery of more than 100 Dabchi girls that were kidnapped early this year. Boards of federal government agencies have been urged to strictly adhere to extant regulations and directives on frequent sittings and non-interference in the administrative routines and management of agencies. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, B Boss Mustafa, reiterated this at a meeting with the Chairman and Board of Directors of the Federal Mortgage Bank. so that we can also cut down on costs. For every board meeting, your organization bears responsibility. And we feel that probably if we limit the, the number of meetings, we will be able to cut down on costs, we will be able to reduce areas of friction, and uh, uh, not only friction and new interference, uh, it will remain at full until we revise that. He warned that any managing director that flouts the directive will bear the costs. Meanwhile, the federal government has reversed the purported suspension of the Director General of the National Women Development Center, Mary Igbereta, for non-adherence to due process. A statement by the Permanent Secretary of the of the Secretary, Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Olushegun Adekule, indicates that government believes in due process and will not tolerate any arbitrary action taken by any board of any agency. Senate President Bukola Saraki has pledged the support of the National Assembly to the International Criminal Court, ICC, in its efforts to check crimes against humanity and ensure justice for victims. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegului reports that he made the pledge while receiving the president of the ICC, Chile Osuji. There's some Nigerian-related preliminary investigations at the ICC, but that has not stopped. Government to say Nigeria has nothing to hide. We do strongly support the court for that. I'm very, very grateful. I think also at the same time, you have come at a very challenging time because, as you know, there are other African countries that have different views at this particular time. And Nigeria has continued to play the role to stand firm and also being able to kind of happy between the different countries. And I think having you as, um, as the president, I think, was well thought out. The ICC president also engaged Deputy Senate President E.K. Ekwere Madu. For us, uh, uh, as civilized uh, people, we believe that uh, human life is also uh, very, very uh, uh, precious. And that's why if you look at the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria dealing with the human rights, the first right is right to life. Crimes that shook the conscience of humanity cannot go without someone being held accountable. This, the ICC president said, is what the ICC is all about. ECOWAS Joint Committee is brainstorming in Dakar, Senegal, on how infringement on human rights is 
crisis, in crisis areas within the region can be drastically minimized. United Nations Human Rights Commission says it will sustain its platform in all ECOWAS countries to protect refugees, IDPs, forcibly displaced communities and stateless people. Joseph Orok reports. With the upsurge of terrorism and other forms of insecurity in Nigeria, Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso and Cote d'Ivoire, governments and humanitarian organizations are doing everything possible to contain the situation. This notwithstanding, the situation exposes women, children, prisoners and vulnerables to serious humanitarian rights violations. Therefore, this meeting wants an improvement to the conditions of victims of crisis. When the uh, fundamental rights of the refugees are no longer pro uh, protected by the governments of their host country, of their home countries, it is the international community th th that has to make sure that their rights are being protected. UNHCR is also involved in mixed migration in West Africa. And recently, we opened an emergency transit migration uh, mechanism in Niger to manage the resettlement flows of migrants that have been trapped in Libya. There were paper presentations on the management of IDPs and refugees within ECOWAS region, humanitarian challenges in crisis zones in West Africa, as well as paper presentation on Africa and international legal framework for the protection of human rights of victims of crisis. In Dakar, Senegal, Joseph Orok, NTA News. In the meantime, to tackle what appears to be a potential human trafficking destination after Libya, Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Onyama has met with the Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, Julie Okadonli, to discuss ways of addressing the upsurge of trafficking of teenage girls to Saudi Arabia. Foreign Desk Correspondent Makut Simon Macham reports. Libya. The tragedy that has revealed the dark side of human trafficking and the consequences of desperation by some Nigerian youths to migrate to other countries at all costs. While the government is continuing efforts to bring back those stranded out there, another route seems to be booming under the radar where young girls are said to be trafficked to Saudi Arabia, purportedly for employment as domestic aids. This meeting between the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyama, and the Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, Julie Oka Donley, hopes to sound the alarm and raise a curtain against this ugly trend before it's too late. And of course, you and I know that there's a lot of sexual exploitation going on because most of the times, even for those who are actually doing housework, they are always sexually abused by the masters of the house. And there's a lot of organ harvesting also going on in countries like that. You better stop and um, because we're out to get you. It's a war between us and you, so you better stop before you do something very, very terrible to you. Stop. The two hope that other stakeholders will join in arresting the situation while more training and collaboration between officers of the two bodies will be facilitated to enable them to be effective. In Abuja, Makut Simon Macham, NTA News. You're watching NTA Network News. Hengino in Lagos has the next set of reports. Over to you, Hengino. Thank you, Elizabeth, and a warm welcome to Lagos. Federal government's quest to diversify the nation's economy is yielding positive results as the West African Ceramics Limited, makers of Royal Ceramics, opened a mega center in Lagos. The company says the center is to improve consumers' engagement and access to the products across the state. Ken Egbeluwe has the report. It was a gathering of building professionals under one roof. The aim is to open a one-stop shop in the production and sales of world-class ceramics. The mega experience center speakers at the event noted would afford architects and project managers the opportunity to patronize the royal brands of tides. It is also to take advantage of the availability of the same high standard and better quality ties that are obtainable in the European markets. We are the one develop the solid minerals. We give the training to the people. We develop manpower. 
to uh, train laymen. We take uh, literally village people and we train them the all ceramic process. A visual test and physical test has revealed that they didn't cut corners and they have very excellent products. You really need to go outside there to get good tiles. Looking at what I've seen round, I can see that lovely beautified porcelain and ceramic tiles have been displayed. In. Speaking at the event, the Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, who was represented by the Director of News, reiterated NTA's commitment in promoting local content development as demonstrated by the West African Ceramics Limited. What we see here, that was why NTA partners with them in order to showcase what the government is talking about. Go back to the basis, bring out what we have in order to satisfy not only our need, not only the needs of Africa, but beyond the frontiers of Africa. The company says the Royal Experience Center will be replicated in other major cities across the country, in Lagos. Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. The United States Consul General Lagos, John Bree, has commended the corporate social responsibility and operational model of Belema Oil Production Limited in its exploration in River State. Bree gave the commendation when he visited Belema Oil Corporate headquarters in Port Harcourt and promised to facilitate international investment alliance between the company and U.S. investors. The Lema oil model is hinged on a world-class sustainable community engagement philosophy that seeks mutual wealth creation between the company and its host community. This model, U.S. Consul General John Bray agreed, is responsible for the peaceful business environment the company enjoys. John Bray promised to support Belema with technology transfer, equipment procurement from the U.S., and other technical aids to enable it optimize productivity. If mean, you want an investor to come, let's have free, fair, transparent, nonviolent elections in Port Harcourt. Let the world see that. That's the best advertising you can do. Are the rest of your goals? We're right behind you. For the president and founder of Belema Oil, Ten Jack Rich, securing a United States partnership is a sure means of boosting Nigeria's oil and gas production capacity and opening up new vistas of investments to further grow the nation's economy. The future of this state depends on you, and um, nonviolence is key. I want to appeal to, to you, sir, that as uh, uh, soon as 2019 comes and goes, we would like your strong presence within this region so we can further collaborate and develop uh, you know, technology transfer, capacity building. The Niger Delta Zone has been neglected for a very long time. But I thank God for Belema Oil as a frontier of bringing to bear that of the truth. We have other persons that can do it. The U.S. Consulate delegation took a tour of Belema facilities where they had first-hand information on the viability of the company's operational model in relation to its several public and host communities. You're still watching NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this timeout. Please stay with us. Fine. I'm going to Sun office for the certification of my wheat flour. Oh no, things have changed. Sun has simplified all its activities. You could have even stayed back in Kano and process all your papers online. Whoa. With the efforts of Sun, the products of SMEs can now compete globally. Sun has put in place necessary machineries in support of the growth of SMEs. At highly subsidized charges, SMEs can now get their certification, laboratory testing of their products, as well as purchase of standards. Meanwhile, Sun is carrying out massive seizure of substandard goods in the market and have gotten legal backing to prosecute offenders, all to protect consumers and SMEs. Sun, improving life through standard. All TVs say picture quality, but never mention the most important color, black. It uncovers the hidden details of nature, brings out the richness in all colors, and reveals life. With self-lighting pixels, only OLED TVs make perfect black. And perfect black creates perfect color. LG OLED TV. 
Take a good look at our world today and you'll discover something interesting. More and more drivers are choosing mobile motor oils. You see, as engine performance becomes more important than ever, the vehicle owners are coming to expect more from their engine oils. They're demanding more mileage on a single oil change. They're demanding longer lasting engines and smoother rides. They're demanding the best. And with Mobil, that's what they get. We raise the bar for motor oils with the Mobil Super 1000. And with the Mobil One, we raised it even higher. And because it's made using the most advanced engineering processes, Mobil motor oils leave your engine super clean, increase its durability, and keep it so well protected, <laughs> it never stops running. So if success for you depends on continuous movement, you need engine oil, engineered for that purpose. Mobil. Performance at its best. Make it mobile. Kende suffers from indigestion. His twin Taiyi suffers from heartburn. Sometimes it's the other way around, or both. That's why they use Gaviscon Double Action. It soothes within three minutes and lasts for up to four hours. For double relief from heartburn and indigestion, Gaviscon Double Action. The winning energy and great Milo taste, now ready to go. The winning energy and great Milo taste, now ready to go. Milo! The winning energy and great Milo taste, now ready to go. Thanks for staying with us on NTA Network News. Talking business now, Ministry of Finance lists gains of whistleblower policy as it announces amount of recorded loot. Details of these and more on Business News. Hello and welcome to business segment of the news. The federal government says it has recovered the sum of 7.8 billion naira, $378 million and more than 27,800 pounds since the inception of the whistleblower policy. The Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshun, disclosed this at an evaluation workshop on the whistleblower policy and the interagency asset tracing team organized by the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption. The minister was represented by the Secretary, Presidential Initiative Committee on Audit, Dr. Mohamed Dikwa. He said the policy has provided and opens up various channels through which violations of government's financial regulations and mismanagement of public funds and assets are being reported. The federal government has also recovered directly as a result of this tip the sum of 7.8 billion naira, 376 million dollars, and 27,800 pounds. Now, closing figures from the Nigerian Stock Exchange on Friday indicate that the OSHA index has erased previous days' loss as market sentiment returns positive. The OSHA index appreciated by 0.29% to close at 40,928.70 basis point as against minus 0.09% depreciation recorded on Thursday. Market capitalization stood at 14.784 trillion naira. Its year-to-date returns currently stands at 7.02%. Sovereign Trust Insurance PLC, Zenit Bank and Lasaco were the most active to boost market turnover. Wema Bank led 32 gainers as against 22 losers topped by Interbrew at the end of the day's session. The stock market report wraps up business news. Good evening. Thank you, Amina. Now, world-class lubricant manufacturer Amasco International Limited has officially launched its synthetic engine oil, which has been rated one of the best in the world. Adebola Brooksley Sunday witnessed the event. It official engine oil for NASA. NASA! That was the official presentation of Amasco Synthetic SW30 with APISN and CF. Ama grease, lithium and sodium, including the 4-liter ATF Dextron 3, 
safety and value for money are paramount to every car owner. These are no doubts encapsulated in the products of Amasco Lubricants. Amasco! Tested and trusted. These technicians under the umbrella of National Automobile Technicians Association, NATA, from all parts of the country converged on Abuja to be part of the launch of the new products and also take advantage of the opportunity to acquire more knowledge. Officials of Amasco say the synthetic oil can be used for about 20,000 kilometers in Nigeria before replacement. It is a polymer oil. It looks lighter, but it expands in the engine. You don't need an oil treatment for Amasco products because they are already treated. But when Amasco come in, immediately we find out that most of the problems that we are having concerning the engine is from the engine oil. The problem now is solved. We hope to continue to cooperate with Amasco in the years ahead. Amasco focuses on research and development to produce innovative products in the ever-changing market conditions and customers' demand. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Shareholders of Zenith Bank PLC have caused to smile with the declaration of 157 billion naira as profit after tax for 2017. Musa Abubakar reports that the amount represents 32% increase from the previous year. Despite being a challenge in 2017 for operators in the banking sector, Zenith Bank recorded some successes. Besides recording a total deposit of 2.7 trillion naira, the bank's total assets grew by 13% from 4.2 trillion to 4.8 trillion naira, while shareholders' funds rose from 616 billion to 708 billion naira. The adoption of 245 cover per share see shareholders receiving a total of 270 cover per share as dividends for the year 2017. Dividend of 76 billion, 921, 409, 775, uh, Naira, 70 cover. For the dividend for the 12 months ended December 2017, uh, B and is hereby declared payable on pro rata basis from the every indication and the, the report presented to us, to the shareholders today, we are smiling. We are very happy for what we are getting. The dividend that is given to us is very commendable. We are very happy for the two Naira 70 Kobo for the final dividend. You can see the profit after tax went up by, went up by 32% in a very, very difficult year to one, uh, from 119 billion to 157 billion naira. The meeting featured the adoption and approval of the appointment of new directors for the bank, amongst other resolutions. In Abuja, Musa Abubakar, NTA News. The Special Presidential Investigation Panel for the Recovery of Public Property has taken a step further in the fight against corruption as it partners the Fiscal Responsibility Commission on this mandate. Chairman of the panel, Chief Akoy Obono Obla, stated this in Abuja when he visited the commission. John Yaku has details. Pursuant to President Muhammad Buhari's campaign promise to fight corruption, a panel of recovery of public property was constituted in August 2017 with a mandate to investigate assets unlawfully acquired by public officers. As this mandate cannot be achieved in isolation, the panel is working with other agencies to achieve this, especially in the area of sharing information and intelligence for a common purpose. This informs the visit to the Fiscal Responsibility Commission which is responsible for prudent management of the nation's resources. It's an area we have to work together, where you carry out your investigation and you discover that some people have taken money, particularly public officers, then you, you bring them to us. Acting chairman of the commission expressed readiness for the partnership because for support in the amendment of the existing act of the commission to make it more functional. The amendment got to the committee stage, but it didn't see the light of the day. Mm. And we're very happy that Mr. President have also sent in his own uh, bill. Mm. And they have uh, harmonized. And I think it's coming to the critical stage where we'll also need your support. 
to ensure that we don't just bag, but that we can also buy it. Yes. Both organizations are in agreement that such collaboration in the recovery of public property will not only kill corruption, but also generate more revenue for government to meet its promises to the people. In Abuja, John Yaku, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. Makudi is next on the news and Palm is our guide. Palm. And welcome to Makudi. The acting governor of Benue State, Benson Abono, has tasked security operatives in the state to be proactive rather than reactive in tackling the serial attacks on Benue communities. He said this while briefing newsmen after a closed door meeting with various agencies in the state. We held a meeting and we decided that the best approach should be proactive. We should forestall rather than go to repair a situation that has already gone by. We should, uh, they, they, it is incumbent upon the, the, the security forces to ensure, for instance, uh, to block the entry points where these attackers come from so that we forestall any attack that might take place. The acting governor expressed optimism that the proactive measures are capable of forestalling the persistent attacks by the assailants and any other militia. Fifteen suspects are in police net in Makudi, Benue State for various crimes including allegation of abduction of a 44-year-old Cameroonian. Benue State Commissioner of Police Mr. Fatai Owosheni, while parading the suspects, said their arrests were made possible through collaborative efforts. Elias Itia has details. Among the 15 suspects paraded is a man who was said to have hypnotized a Cameroonian lady who was in Calabar, Nigeria in 1990 to write her wife examinations only for her to be adopted by one Alhaji Ali Omonya. Others are two suspects who were intercepted with large quantities of tramadol and other hyperactive substances in collaboration with the main drug law enforcement agency, NDLA. Equally paraded as suspected armed robbers arrested in different parts of the state. The sad and interesting story where a lady, a Cameroonian, had come to Nigeria to come and write um, work exams and somehow um, he had used one means or the other um, which are known, not known to the law to put this Cameroonian lady in a family way. Father of the rescued victim, Mr. Michael Eyong, who hails from Mamfe in Cameroon, wants justice to take his cause. The commissioner appreciated the partnership of members in ensuring a crime-free society. In Makudi, Elias, ETF, continues. And that will be it from Makudi. Elizabeth, it's over to you for the rest of the network news. Thank you, Pam. The national identification number is to be included in the biometric data captured on the national driver's license. This is part of the proposals made by the Director General, National Identity Management Commission, Ali Aziz, when he met with the Federal Road Safety Corps in Abuja. Comfort Amodu reports. The Director General of NIMSI, who visited the FRSC headquarters, suggested that the Corps should make it mandatory for all applicants of the National Driver's License to produce their national identification number at the point of registration. He applauded the management of the Corps for efforts in creating a central database for all applicants, noting that the system operated by the FRSC is a par with what is obtainable in advanced countries. The focus is that in future, if one has his own driver's license that also has the name, then it will serve the purpose for identification. And there's no need to, to duplicate what we do. The core marshal congratulated NIMSI for digitalizing the entire processes of the National Identity Card and expressed appreciation over the request presented by the Commission. The last stage is with you. Yes. to enable us activate this so that uh, when the name number is provided 
we, we import the, the data and uh, I think we need to really fast track all the all these things to, to, to reduce it. The, the, the core has a good relationship, like I said, and we, we continue. It's statutory. We must work with NIMSI. OEME therefore assured him that in as much as the idea is for the good of Nigeria, FRS would key into it and ensure that henceforth applicants of the driver's license reduce their NIN at registration points. He suggested harmonization of data by all agencies of government in the country. In Abuja, Comfort Amadou, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. Still to come, sports and weather. We'll be right back. Registration is now open for state and sports clubs to participate with free accommodation and feeding for athletes and officials on the basis of first come first serve at the first national grassroots sports festival sports for all to discover sport talent develop future world champions and rejuvenate sports in Nigeria date 19 to 29th of April 2018 venue national stadium Abuja packages A and B. This is an opportunity for state governors to mobilize supporters and fans for their state through broadcast sponsorship and for companies to promote their brand. For broadcast sponsorship, contact Angelo Peter I. Elosia, Chairman and Chief Coordinator, or Nick Onyisi, organizers, Grassroots International Sports Academy and LOP Worldwide Television, endorsed by the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development. Broadcast partner NTA, the largest television network in Africa. Ilyasu Ali Akubo brings us news from other parts of the globe. A UN donor conference in Geneva seeking to raise $1.7 billion for the country. The UN says more than 13 million Congolese need humanitarian aid calling it a catastrophic humanitarian crisis. And Uganda plans to impose a daily tax on social media users from July in a bid to raise revenue. The move has been criticized by right activists, said it's part of a wider attempt to curtail freedom of expression. Earlier this month, President Yoweri Museveni, who has been in power for more than 30 years, was quoted as saying in a letter to Mr. Kaseja and other officials that the tax should be introduced on people who use social media for gossip. A report from outside the shores of Africa indicates that Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said a reported chemical attack in Syria was staged by foreign agents. Russia, which has military forces deployed in Syria in support of the government, warned that U.S. airstrikes risked starting a war. The U.N. Secretary General has said the Middle East is in chaos and the war is back with a vengeance. Antonio Guterres was speaking at a special meeting of the U.N. Security Council called by Russia. And that's it on this segment. My name is Ilyasu Ali Yakubu. The news continues in a moment. Talking sports now, Nigeria raking four 